good morning, everyone, and thanks for being here with me. Um, really, Craig hit the nail on the head. Everything I'm going to talk about today comes back to one word. It's a word here in Fort Wayne that I think is really underutilized, tremendously underutilized. It's very much underappreciated, and that's unfortunate because I think it's a word that represents what's really good about Fort Wayne, represents something that I think is our greatest asset, and ultimately it's our competitive advantage, our greatest competitive advantage, whether we're talking about economic development, talent, uh, retention, all those points, it all comes back to that one word, and that word, of course, is accessibility. Now, my appreciation for this word, my appreciation that this quality, um, for this quality that Fort Wayne has, to understand that, you have to go back 17 years to 1994. In 1994, I was 24 years old. Right? I had big dreams, big ideas, big hair, okay? And I was living in the greater Boston area. And like a lot of young people, I was kind of restless. Wanted something different, wanted something new, wanted to change. And that urge, combined with circumstance, brought me from the greater Boston area here to Northeast Indiana. Now, you know what they always say? They say, be careful what you wish for, you just might get it. I wanted something different. Different is exactly what I got. For example, when I moved to Northeast Indiana, there were cows. Okay, cows were new in my experience. I had spent a cow-free existence for 24 years, and then all of a sudden, cows aplenty. Cows as far as the eye could see. In addition, there were these elevators that apparently had something to do with grain. Every elevator, in my experience heretofore, was about moving people up and down in tall buildings. It's the only reason elevators existed, but not these elevators. They were remarkably different. And, Last but not least, there were people in Northeast Indiana who took Rush Limbaugh somewhat serious. <laughs> <laughs> Being from the greater Boston area, this too was new, this too was new. Now, these were the initial impressions, the things that first struck me about Northeast Indiana. But you know what? They faded pretty quickly over time. They just weren't that important. They just didn't have a big impact. And what I realized over time is there was this other thing that was having an increasing impact on me was increasingly important to me. And as I chose to build a career here, make connections here, make friendships here, have a son here, buy a home here, build a career here, I realized that it came down to this idea of accessibility. It took me a long time to articulate this, but that's exactly what it was that kept me here. All right, so I want to start by saying, what is this accessibility thing I'm talking about? What do I mean when I say accessibility? Well, a lot of times when communities tout accessibility, it looks something like this. Move to Fort Wayne. We're two hours from Indianapolis, three hours from Chicago, and four hours from Detroit. Okay? And if your audience is business owners looking for transportation infrastructure, I think that's an okay message. That's a really, really small audience. And to everyone else, the much larger audience, that is a terrible message to send. A horrible message to send. If your greatest asset is that you're three hours from Chicago, you know what I'm gonna think if I'm not from here? Why don't I just move to Chicago? <laughs> Chicago is zero hours from Chicago the last time. <laughs> right? So when we talk about accessibility, it's not this. It is not this at all. I don't wanna live in a place that is the gateway to other places. I wanna live in a place that makes it good and valuable to stay right here, okay? And that's what I'm talking about when I say accessibility. Now, I wanna give you three examples of how Fort Wayne provides this unique and differentiated and important accessibility to things that everybody in the world wants. I think here in Fort Wayne, we have great access to these things. Time, money, and people. If you ask anyone in the world what they want more of, it's generally one of these things. It generally comes down to this, and you have it today. Right here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, you have it today, absolutely. And I know this, because I'm not from here, all right? Now, and how, what I want to do is share an example of each of these that demonstrate what my life was like and what my life is like today because of what I have access to, all right? The first two are pretty easy to understand. The third is a little more complicated. But let's start with time. How does living in Fort Wayne give me access to more time? Aren't there still 24 hours in a day? The answer is yes. However, when I first graduated college, I was living in Salem, Massachusetts, a city known for killing innocent people in the 17th century. That's primarily what it's known for. But I was living in Salem, and I was working in Boston, a distance of less than 20 miles. 
My commute, however, was 90 minutes each way. An hour and a half in the car in the morning, getting to work, an hour and a half getting home at night. And at the time, I didn't really question this. Just kind of what you did. Comes with the territory. Nature of the beast. All right? I didn't think it was absurd. So I moved to Northeast Indiana, and I was like, hey, my commute's 15 minutes on a bad day each way. It's a half an hour. Yeah, it's a horrible commute. I have like two stoplights on the way. But yeah, 30 minutes getting to and from work instead of three hours. So moving to Fort Wayne has given me access to two and a half hours of discretionary time that I didn't have before. I think we tremendously underappreciate that. I think that is a huge asset. Now, what about money? How does living in Fort Wayne give me access to more money? Well, if I were in the greater Boston area today and I were shopping for a home, I should expect an average housing cost of more than $375,000. And that's not for a mansion, it's not for a palace, that is an average decent home in the greater Boston area. Now, two years ago, my wife and I bought a home in Fort Wayne for $155,000. It's not a palace, it's not a mansion, but it's really nice. You know, it is a quarter mile from the Fort Wayne Trail. It's one of my favorite things about where I live. Another great asset here in Fort Wayne. All right? Beautiful neighborhood. And my favorite thing about it, and my son's favorite thing about it, is in the backyard, we have a pool. All right? If you want to know the benefits of pool ownership, talk to my 11-year-old son, Alex, and you will have a full day. He will tell you everything he loves about having a pool. So living in Fort Wayne has given me access to this extra $200,000 of discretionary income. That's pretty great. Now, this one's a little more complicated. How does Fort Wayne give me better access to people? You know, you might be thinking, well, there's not nearly as many people in Fort Wayne as there are in Boston. Why do you have better access to people here? Well, there's a couple ways this is true. First of all, absolutely better access to decision makers. If you want to get things done in this town, you can do it. It's up to you. You can find those people. All right? we, all, we all joke about it. We all laugh about it. You know, we say there's not six degrees of separation in Fort Wayne. It's more like four or maybe two, or sometimes it seems like there's not even one degree of separation between people. However, you know, I don't think we appreciate that very much. It, it always boggles my mind. If I go to lunch at the Green Frog, half the times I do that, the mayor opens the door for me. When I was working in Boston, I gotta tell you something, Tom Menino was not opening the door for me. <laughs> Tom Menino had people to keep people like me away from Tom Menino. He had people to open the doors for him. So access to decision makers here, absolutely, regardless of what industry you're in, whether it's government, business, whatever you're trying to access, you have access to that. The other way we have access to people is a little more complicated, but I think it's just as important. If I were living in Boston, because of the number of people, it would be very tempting to surround myself with people who look and act and think just like I do. People only from the same industry. People only from the same tax bracket, if you will. All right? You have this unlimited opportunity in these big cities to stay in your comfort zone. And we think of that as a good thing, but I think it's really not that good. How are you gonna grow? How are you gonna be challenged if you don't surround yourself with people who are gonna challenge you and help you grow? People who are gonna push you a little bit, all right? You just simply can't do that when all you're surrounded with are people who think and act just like you. Here in Fort Wayne, I think we have access to something that we don't appreciate. Access to what I like to call productive discomfort. Productive discomfort. An unlimited opportunity to challenge your perceptions. If you are at all active in this community, active professionally, active as a volunteer, active socially, I gotta tell you something, you're gonna run into people who aren't like you, people who don't think like you, people from different industries. The opportunity you have here is an unlimited access, unlimited opportunity to challenge your preconceptions, to challenge the things you hold to be true, to have better ideas ultimately because they're shaped by a collective. Craig Crook has said this, and it's stuck with me ever since he said it to me, but all of us are smarter than any of us, but to access that knowledge, you gotta go outside the box a little bit. You have to find people with complementary skills, complementary worldviews, a more diverse network, if you will. We have access to that today, absolutely. Now, here's what I want all of you to do today. I want you to challenge your preconceptions. I want you to challenge the way you think about Fort Wayne. In Fort Wayne, we tend to be very self-conscious about ourselves, all right? We tend to you know, undersell ourselves. What we end up doing when we have the opportunity to talk to people about Fort Wayne is we play defense instead of offense. We apologize for being from Fort Wayne. I want you to change that today, starting today. I want you to start playing offense instead of playing defense when it comes to Fort Wayne. All right? When you have the opportunity to talk to someone, maybe it's a young person, 
and they're thinking of moving away because there's nothing to do here. Or maybe you're talking to a business that's thinking of relocating here and you're trying to tell them why Fort Wayne. I want you to ask them very difficult questions. I want you to challenge them with three questions. All right? I want you to ask them first, what would you do if you had an extra two and a half hours every day? We all say there's these great things we would do if only we had more time. Well, here's your chance. Move to Fort Wayne. We're going to give you two and a half extra hours a day. And what are you going to do with it? You're going to go back to school. Is that the thing you want to do with all this time? You're going to go back to school? All right. I know this from experience. In the 17 years that I've lived here, I've been able to go back to school twice, get two master's degrees. And I've got to tell you something. I'm a lot smarter as a result of it. I'm still not the smartest person in the room, but I'm getting there. All right? And part of it is because I've been able to access higher education because I had time to do it. This is absolutely available to you here. All right? Maybe you're not interested in acquiring knowledge. Maybe you're interested in disseminating knowledge. You know, all those people who want to write a book? You can do a lot of writing with an extra two and a half hours every day. You can get that done. All right? Maybe the thing you're interested in is the thing we say, we, we always say we want to do, spend more time with your family. If the thing that's holding you back from doing that is a three-hour commute, stop commuting for three hours. Move somewhere you don't have to be. All right, so that's one of the questions that you can ask. Another question we should be asking people is what would you do with more disposable income? What would you do if you had an extra $200,000? Right, maybe the thing you want to do is start a business. All right, people here in Fort Wayne are doing it all the time. Chuck Surak did it with Sweetwater Sound. Anybody here start a business? Show of hands. Yeah, yeah, look at all the hands go up. That's great. All right, if you think of that disposable income as capital, $200,000 is a hell of a lot of capital. You can start a pretty good business with $200,000 if you look at it that way. Maybe that's not of interest to you. Maybe the thing you want to do is see the world and then come back to a place that allows you to do it over and over and over again. You can travel more often because you have more discretionary income to put toward travel. Maybe philanthropy is what interests you. Have a great opportunity to give back in this community because you have more discretionary income to do it with. So one more question I want you to ask people. What would you do with a more diverse network? What would you do if you surrounded yourself with people who challenged you? Maybe what you do is just color outside the lines a little bit. Think differently, challenge your own preconceptions, and come up with better ideas. Maybe you'd take that a step further. Maybe you'd use those ideas to really connect with people and collaborate and get something started. Maybe you'll take it even a step further and you'll start a movement. Right? Do something that really, really makes a difference. You know, the Fort Wayne Derby girls, those women are from all walks of life. They are. You know, it's just amazing me some of the people involved in this effort. But what they're doing out at the Coliseum, that's not a sport. That is a movement. They are providing entertainment, and they are giving back to the community while doing it. That's phenomenal stuff. What you're part of here today is also a movement. You're part of it right now. And we have this opportunity to start movements every single day because we have access to people who are going to challenge us and help us get that done. Complementary skill sets, complementary worldviews. Now, I want to close with a quote from someone whose spirit kind of permeates everything we're talking about today. Seth Godin, right? A quote from Seth is he really says, we have to challenge this notion that bigger is inherently better. We really need to challenge that. And I think, you know, it's true that we shouldn't be, be small because we can't figure out how to be big. We should consider how being small has advantages, all right? Don't be Fort Wayne because you can't figure out how to be Indianapolis or Chicago. Don't try to be Indianapolis or Chicago. Look at Fort Wayne and say, what are the advantages we have? What are the assets we should be leveraging? All right? What are the things that we should be promoting because of our size, because we're agile, because we give our residents access to all these things? That's the challenge for all of us. And as you listen to the other speakers here today, I want you to focus on what's good about your community. I want you to focus about yourself and what has living in Fort Wayne allowed you to access that it wouldn't, what wouldn't have been possible somewhere else. I know what it is for me. I know it starts with time, money, and people, but it's much more than that. Think about that today. Decide what it is for you. And when you have the opportunity to tell Fort Wayne's story, that's the story I want you to tell. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.